Hello students, this is Dr. Ben. Let's take a few minutes to work out a problem from Chapter 5 that has to do with the topic of circular motion kinematics. So here we have a situation where a jogger is running around a circular path and we're given some information about the, the path that they're running on, the, um, the radius of that, and here we've got some information about the time that it takes, and we're given some information about the initial position of the jogger. And so we're asked in this problem to find the jogger's instantaneous velocity at two different times. And so we'll need to draw a diagram so we can get the vector nature of the velocity right. But before we do that, we might as well go ahead and figure out what the speed of the jogger is because uh, they're going around the track at a constant speed and we can figure that out from the information that's given. So, if we want to find the speed of an object in circular motion, we can use uh, the, the kinematic relationships. So, we could say that V is equal to the angular velocity omega multiplied by the radius of the circle. And in our particular problem, we don't know the angular velocity, but we do know the period of the motion because we're told that it makes one revolution in 188.4 seconds. So omega is going to be equal to 2 pi divided by that period. So if we multiply that by the radius r, then we've got enough information to find the speed. So in our particular problem, we would take 2 pi and divide it by the 188.4 seconds and then multiply by the 90 meters. So if I get my calculator out, I'll take 2 times pi and then I'll divide that by 188.4 and I'll multiply that by the 90 meters and that actually gives me the number 3 exactly, so I'm going to write that as 3.0 meters per second. So that's going to be the value of the speed of this jogger. And then in order to figure out the velocity at these different times, we're going to have to draw, um, we're going to have to draw a, a sketch so we can figure out where on the circle the jogger is located. So let's move the paper up a little bit and we'll draw that, that picture. So imagine that we're looking at the, at the jogger going around the path from a top view and so there would be the circle in its center and if we scroll back to the problem for a second we can see that we're given the information that at t equals zero oops, t equals zero um, the jogger is heading due east and they're running counterclockwise. So that helps us decide where the initial position of the jogger is. So we want to rotate counterclockwise and at t equals zero we want the velocity to point to the east. So that means that the jogger is going to be located down at this lowest point on and the velocity at that point, which would actually be our original point, will be um, tangent to the circle. All right, so the, the first time that we are given in part A of the problem, All right, is 376.8 seconds. So, 376.8 seconds, which is equal to two times the period that was given in the beginning part of the problem. And the time T2 that is given as um, 94.2 seconds would be equal to one-half of the period. Alright, so scrolling back to our, our picture, if the object starts down here at the zero of our watch, we go around two complete revolutions, and so that means that the object would end up back at the starting point 
after it ran, after the jogger ran around two laps. And so therefore the velocity at point one is going to have the value of 3.0 meters per second, but it's going to point east because that was the direction of the original velocity. All right, time two would be equal to one half of the period. So that means that the object would go halfway around the circle, and the object being the jogger. So at that point, the velocity vector would point to like this green arrow that I just drew that would be to the west. And so the velocity number two will have the same magnitude, which is our three meters per second. But now we can see from our picture that that vector points west. All right, so we notice that for uniform circular motion, the velocity vectors are always tangent to the circle, and that means that they are perpendicular to the radius. So if I would draw the radius for each of these times, then the, the velocity vector makes a right angle with that, which is 90 degrees. All right, so there we have our, our problem. We calculated the speed for the uniform circular motion, and then we figured out the direction of the velocity at these two specific points by using a kind of a pictorial representation.